Hey guys, welcome to the shop. It is bright and early in the morning and today's job is to get this truck on a trailer and head it over to my brother's place down the interstate actually. Get it in the paint booth and you know, get ready to spray some color basically. But what I need to do before this thing can even go on a trailer is I need to make sure that everything is secure, that I've got all of my parts and pieces that need painted. We are gonna bolt the fenders on this thing. We're gonna put the hood latch on this, put a bolt or two in the bed because in my mind I'm envisioning me forgetting to do that, looking in the rear view, heading down the interstate, the hood fly up and bend back over the top of the roof and then immediately see the bed blow off this thing. I'd lose it, I probably, is what would happen if that occurred. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Get this thing ready to be loaded on the trailer. And maybe, maybe by the end of this video, spray some color. I don't know. We'll see. So the first thing that we're going to do is jam the fenders on this thing just temporarily. We're not trying to 100% you know, align these or nothing like that. We're going to just put a few bolts on them to where they'll ride. And then we'll tackle the bed and just give this thing a good good once over make sure it is trailer worthy so i'm wiping on some wax and grease remover before i stick this on the truck i want to make sure that it's ready to it's ready to go no, no reason to take it over to the paint booth if it ain't ready to paint or at least very close i don't want to be doing body work over there so just a little wax and grease remover gives me a good shine i can look down this fender for any dents or waves or whatever this is a fender that I welded all along the uh, all along the fender gap there. Put probably half inch of weld on it. So looks pretty good. <laughs> looks really good considering what's all been done to it. And this was a new fender, a new repop that just didn't fit. It never ends. So it never ends. It, it, it never ends. Let me show you what I just now found. Kind of took a little bit of wind out of my sails, but I'm, I guess I'm glad I found it now versus finding it in the paint booth. Right here, let me show you. So right in the middle of the hood on the bottom there, I found a crack. That's from metal fatigue. Years of this thing driving down the road and the hood flexing at this radius caused a little crack there. And if I don't fix that now, you know, it's just going to split up the hood and get worse. So here's a little look at what I've come... Oh, goodness. So here's a little look at what i come come up with. Actually, my brother, I was talking to him on the phone, and he recommended this. And I just bent a piece of sheet metal over, made a lip on it to give it some strength. That, there's a structure back here, so I can't, like, slide a piece of angle or anything back here. But this little piece of metal will just slide back there like that. Then... I can tack weld it here and here and weld up the hole. That will give it some strength across this uh, cutout here and hopefully keep it from breaking back loose in the future. That's the plan. It's not plugged in. Oh, it's not. What? Not plugged in. about now all right so let the messing up of my previous body work begin ah super glad I found this now would have really not been good to paint this hood and then find that <laughs> you got a crack in it So check out the bologna sandwich that Elizabeth just brought out. Two pieces of bologna moving up in the world. So I've always loved fried bologna ever since I was a kid. My mom used to make me these. She still does. Uh, all the time. Because they're quick, right? You can grab this while you're outside playing and take off into the woods and 
you know, pound this down and uh, never miss a beat. That's what I used to do. So what I've been using lately for a Bondo board, putty board, whatever you want to call it, is this old sheet of Teflon that I picked up. And it's awesome because you can just literally wipe the filler right off of it and reuse it. So I forgot to mention, you can also, if you get a lot of filler on here that dries up, you just bend it, it cracks, and comes right up. But you got to be careful with this and not scratch it. Try not to scratch it because filler will stick to it if it's scratched. So you got to kind of be careful with it because the PTFE or Teflon is soft. Rainstorm coming through. So I think I got everything loaded up. Now we need to put this truck on the trailer.
so I made it over here to my brother's you know, no no real problems on the road which was nice did get caught in a little rain just a just a shower so it didn't hurt anything the stuff that I had in the back of my pickup didn't get wet not really so that was good just trying to shuffle some stuff around so we can get this in the shop So got the paint cart, this is actually my brother's, in the shop. All my paint supplies, all set up in here. I'm doing a base coat, clear coat setup, not a single stage. And what I am using is Shopline Plus, made by PPG. Not the best paint you can buy, not the worst paint you can buy. Just a good quality product that I'm hoping will give me really good results and look awesome. So I'm going to get the paint booth prepped a little bit, pull my bed in here, maybe the hood. Start putting some color on. I should probably bring that hood in. If I'm going to do the hood and this, I should probably bring the hood in first. Set it in the front of the booth. Cover it with plastic. Paint this. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Spray it around it. I mean, let me go get the water hose straight straight. Yeah, I think so. So a lot of people have been waiting to see what colors that I chose for this truck. And really, I chose two colors actually. And I'm doing a uh, two-tone paint job on this thing, trying to stay uh, 
you know, with the original paint scheme, the original paint layout anyway, of this truck, I like the two-tone paint jobs, especially on a square body. You know, for me, that's just, that's what the way that they look best. Now, doing a two-tone paint job adds a lot of extra work because you have to mask off your, your painted area. You know, you have to spray your first color, let it dry, you know, reverse all your masking, and then paint your second color, and then come back with your clear. Now, there's not a lot of trucks out here that, that I see, anyway, that are these colors, you know, in these modern times. I'm using colors that are, I don't know, maybe a little more period correct for this truck. Um, not something that you see a lot, but I think that it's going to look awesome when it's done. So I was quite nervous going to, into this paint job, having never, well, once, like 25 years ago, I painted a, a boot lid, deck lid, trunk lid, whatever you want to call it, that my brother let me spray, spray with his uh, Binks, I think it was a Binks number 7 spray gun, you know, years ago. Spray obviously, all the primer on this vehicle. You guys seen me do a lot of that. But I've never painted a vehicle before. So, and my brother, he painted some with lacquer, but that's been 25 years ago as well. So, complete noobs here, and hoping at this moment, that this job turns out good. Now I did take the time to, to do some research, right? I didn't go into this blind, but yeah, I was a bit nervous. So I think these trucks look, look good solid, a solid color, but I really like them when they're two-tone. Now you can do all sorts of paint layouts on these things. You see the panel painted directly in the middle of the, down the truck, or you see like what I've got here, split to lower third uh, one color. You know, there's lots of, lots of schemes that uh, GM used when they you know, originally painted these trucks. And I'm just going back with what, uh, what it, you know, kind of had originally. But simply because that is the truck I remember, that's the truck I'm rebuilding, and I did take some liberty with the colors. You know, these are not GM colors that I'm using, but uh, they're close to what it was originally. At least they resemble what it came out with original. Uh, I just personally like these better, and I think that this thing is going to look absolutely awesome when it's done. I've always seen a way over price. Yeah, somebody's getting great. So when I painted all the parts on this truck, I really tried to make sure that I got all of my edges in color, all the you know sharp edges and stuff like that, because usually that's where rust and stuff will start. That's where people don't pay as much attention when they spray them. And I wanted to make sure that I coated everything with the paint. I even painted underneath of this uh, this cowl panel, if, if that's what you want to call it. And uh, tried to get three good coats on it. Tried to maintain a pretty steady distance away from the panel when I'm spraying and a good steady steady arm movement you know I think that's you know the key to, to getting a good job and not piling on too much paint at one time you know paint There's a little bit really just well. a light layer you know that even may have been a little heavy what you're seeing here and then you know come back and uh, and hit it again three good coats at least or at least you know until it's uh, thoroughly covered you know, and call it. No reason to pile up a bunch of color on you know, a vehicle like this as long as you have good solid coverage. You know, and then I did three uh, heavy coats of clear, three good wet coats, and that's it. So if you notice, this is the same spray gun that I've been using throughout this entire project, and this is not some super high dollar spray gun. It's a relatively budget modeled Develvis. Uh, starting line, you know, and I used this 
for this project on purpose simply because I wanted to show that you could do everything with one gun. I sprayed the high build polyester primer with this spray gun. I sprayed the urethane primer that went on this thing and now I'm spraying the paint with it and getting a pretty good job in my opinion. You know you got to be careful and uh, try to do as good a job as you can do handling the spray gun but you know you can get a quality job with a with a cheaper gun you know you got to be careful with the metallics and stuff when you're dealing with the you know the way that they lay and try to avoid getting stripes you know tiger stripes or whatever in your panel but you know that's all in the technique uh, mostly uh, as long as you're consistent with your speed of travel and your distance you know, and your guns clean you can get a good job. like that. When that gets clear on it, Rick, that's going to be so nice. So trucks in the booth, getting all set up, wetting down the floor, getting the you know all prepped. Now I'm going to do the first color, the goldish color, down low, and up on top of the cab, and uh, the round the back. I'll show you uh, before I before we get started. 
Now, I'm going to do my jams a little different than what they did from the factory. I'm going to set them up, or actually, I just went through an extra step of taping to kind of make it look like the truck was dipped instead of just a line on the exterior of the vehicle. I'm doing the line on the inside, or the second color, what I'm about to spray now, the secondary color, on the insides of the doors and the bottoms as well. Because I have more of that paint than I have the brown, it's a two-tone truck, you know, just doing it a little different than what they did from the factory. So the bottoms of the cab corners around the back will have a strip. The bottoms of the doors, this will all be the gold, goldish color. Um, originally from the factory, they just did a tape line here and the insides were brown. You know, they, same with the rockers. Originally the rockers inside were brown. Now they're gonna be, now they're gonna be the secondary color, which is gold. So I think it's gonna look pretty good. It'll save me on some brown paint. It'll allow me to do the dash and uh, back uh, behind the, the, uh, the seat. So now that I've got everything painted and before I put the bed on the truck, I decided to spray in a Raptor bed liner kit. It's the DIY kit that you can buy from you know, most automotive stores. And what I used in my bed to get complete coverage, this is a short bed, to do the tailgate, the bed floor, and all around the perimeter inside was three quarts. Now the kit comes with four, which is probably about what it would take if you had a, a long bed pickup truck. What I did to get full coverage on the bed as I kind of held the gun a little close, a little too close actually at first, so I made sure that I got good coverage over the entire surface. Then I backed up a bit and that eliminated a lot of the striping that I got in it from holding the, the spray gun a little close and gave me a nice even texture over the whole thing. And you know, it turned out great. I don't think you'd get any better results by taking it and having it done versus doing it in your driveway. But you do have to tape over everything really well this stuff gets on it gets in the air it gets on everything so cover your vehicle well before you do this
First time I've seen it outside, Rick. Yeah. And that looks good. It does look good. It matches about as good as you could ask. Even though the fender's bed and cab were painted at a different time. It's not perfect, but it's good. It's real nice. Can you get one when you're sanding and buffing? Yeah. It'll be about as slick as anybody's. Yep, get that exhaust raised up a bit. That's four inches. It's gonna look good. Yeah, four or six. Basically, right at the bottom of that uh, hanger. Yeah, right at the bottom of that. You want that way. An inch or two off those, probably. Yeah. It's gonna be nice. firewood's looking like. What do they do with my keys? Oh, no, they're here.
So what did we learn here? I learned that you can hold this truck to the floor indefinitely and the motor won't blow up. All right, guys, we made it home safe. I am so proud of this truck and the work that I've got accomplished in what I would consider a short amount of time. Working on this thing on the weekends, working on it, you know, when I get home after work. Huge thanks to my brothers, you know, for all the help. Viewers who have helped me out on this, just watch the videos, that's been help as well. I could not have done it without each and every one of you, really. So. Still a little ways to go on this thing. Got to do the glass, got to do the interior, but all of the major things on this truck are, are complete, in my opinion. And I'm super excited about it. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. Uh, believe me, I appreciate it. And yeah, that's it. Start a project for yourself. You'll be done before you know it.